Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be showing some more CD purchases from charity shops and all of these that I'm showing today were one pound or less. Uh, first up we've got Steppenwolf and the album Hour of the Wolf and this was put out on the Talking Elephant label. This was their eighth studio album and it came out in 1975. Uh, by this point they were well past their prime but they still had uh, John Kay on lead vocals and guitar and also the original drummer uh, Jerry Edmonton. Uh, the best track on the album is the single which is called Caroline Are You Ready For The Outlaw World? And this was written by Mars Bonfire, uh, who'd also written their massive hit, uh, Born To Be Wild. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's a well-produced, uh, very competent album, but it just didn't have that magic touch to uh, get it through into mainstream success. And next it's uh, Yumir Diodato and the album Tremendeo, which was put out on the label Ubatuki. Uh, Diodato is a brilliant producer arranger and uh, remembered for Alzo Sprach Zarathustra which was a big uh, hit single here in the UK in the early 70s. Um, this is some early recordings that were recorded in Rio de Janeiro back in 1964 and he acts as producer, uh, arranger, conductor and he also plays the Hammond organ and uh, piano. It's to be honest, it's slightly dated, uh, mid-tempo, easy listening big band music. But his Hammond organ especially helps lift this from being just mediocre. And next up, it's Cream and uh, Disraeli Gears, which was uh, put out by Polydor. And uh, the bombast is kept in check on Cream's second album, which came out in 1967. There's touches of psychedelia on this album, but uh, not as much as the cover art might suggest. Uh, to be honest, it's, it's 60s uh, pop songs out of the uh, top drawer, highest calibre recordings, uh, full of memorable tunes and uh, understated playing. It's hard to believe that this is the same band responsible for the live excesses which soon took over after this album. And next it's The Auteurs and Now I'm a Cowboy. And this was put out on the Hut label. Um, this was The Auteurs' second album. It came out in 1994, uh, led by Luke Haynes, uh, who's an intelligent and witty songwriter and is the equal of his contemporaries uh, Jarvis Cocker and Neil Hannon, in my opinion. The six minutes plus track, uh, The Upper Classes, is the centrepiece of the album. And um, the best tune, I think, is a New French Girlfriend, which should have uh, been a hit single. Uh, but unfortunately, people that listen to the radio don't seem to concentrate as much as they should on, on the lyrics of songs. Uh, Lenny Valentino and uh, Chinese Bakery were almost hit singles as well. And uh, so the authors just missed out on a guaranteed appearance on Top of the Pops. And staying with the Britpop era, it's uh, Octopus and From A to B on the Food label. And this comes in a nice little fold out package. Uh, the four singles off this album, Magazine, Your Smile, Saved and Jealousy, all made the UK Top 75 Singles Chart. Um, they sounded a bit like Blur. Well, well, to be honest, they sounded a lot like uh, Blur. Uh, but there's also added uh, Beatles uh, psych touches, which, uh, which are very interesting. And uh, some wonderful pop arrangements throughout the album. Uh, King for a Day is achingly beautiful. And uh, surely this should... Uh, uh, have done another album but unfortunately uh, they split up in 1997. I think I'd go as far as saying that this is a forgotten classic from the Britpop era. And next up it's Graham Parker and The Rumour and uh, Three Chords Good. 
Uh, this was put out on the proper label in 2012. And this was the first time that Graham Parker and the Rumour uh, had recorded together uh, after breaking up in 1980. Uh, all five original Rumour members were on board. And I'd go as far as to say that uh, they were arguably the best UK live band back in their late 70s heyday. Uh, certainly the equal of the uh, attractions and, and uh, rock pile. Um, they sound at times on this album like um, a British version of the band. It's a, to be honest, it's more sedate than their 70s uh, heyday. Um, but they have uh, also an inbuilt uh, soulfulness which uh, is very appealing. Uh, the opening track, Snake Oil, Capital of the World, complete with a, a cheeky lift from uh, one of their classics, uh, Don't Ask Me Questions, is the pick for me. And next up is Os Osric Tentacles and uh, Jurassic Shift. And this came out on Snapper Music in 1993. Uh, it actually broke through uh, into the mainstream charts and I think made the top 20 album chart here in the UK. There's the uh, details on the back. Um, theirs is a very polite take on uh, the space rock uh, genre. Uh, it reminds me at times of uh, Caravan. I think that's partly down to the uh, use of flute at um, various times on this album. Uh, they'll actually be touring shortly with Gong, who are probably their main uh, influence. Moving on, we come to the Cribs and a double CD, Paola 2002-2012, which came out on the Wichita label. Uh, what strikes you on uh, hearing this is how great the tunes are that they recorded. At their best, the sound becomes a um, delirious guitar power pop sound. Uh, there's so many highlights on disc one, which is uh, culled from their singles. Uh, so uh, I especially like I'm a Realist, uh, Men's Needs, Our Bovine Public and uh, Cheat On Me. Uh, the second CD of B-Sides is a revelation too. And that includes a cover of um, Bastards of Young by The Replacements. And that's a band uh, that has a studied uh, sloppiness and, and great tunes, just like the Cribs do. And next it's uh, The Moody Blues and Seventh Sojourn. And this is on the uh, Threshold label. And it's another of the batch of uh, Moody Blues CDs that I picked up in my local charity shop. I'm still working my way through these. Uh, this was their eighth album, came out in 1972. Uh, the prog rock tendencies are kept in check on this album and it's a strong set of uh, songs including uh, Isn't Life Strange and uh, I'm Just a Singer in a Rock and Roll Band. Mike Pinder's Mellotron is as always at uh, a welcome presence and is at the heart of the band and it helps give the band its uh, unique uh, identity. And uh, next up, Edie Brickell and the New Bohemians Ultimate Collection, which was put out on uh, Hippo. Uh, this is an artist I knew very little about beyond um, her hit single, What I Am. And this came as a pleasant surprise. Uh, there's uh, top-notch songwriting throughout. And you also get a number of uh, previously unreleased tracks, which she recorded uh, with a short-lived band called The Slip. And next, uh, another band uh, that got back together. Um, this is uh, In Spiral Carpets and the album I See. Uh, it's uh, put out by Cherry Red Records. And uh, reunion albums don't always work, but it's hard to begrudge the Inspiral Carpets getting back together uh, after 20 years of not uh, recording. Uh, the original vocalist, Stephen Holt, brings a, a different slant to the sound. And as always, Clint Boone's 60s influenced uh, garage band keyboards uh, remain at their heart. Uh, listening to this uh, CD is tinged with some sadness, though, as uh, the drummer Craig Gill sadly died uh, just two years after recording this album. Um, it includes Let You Down, which is a collaboration with John Cooper Clark, and uh, the single You're So Good For Me, which really impresses me with its uh, relentless uh, Velvet Underground uh, influence beat. And... Uh, 
Next up, uh, this was a bit of a surprise. Nora Jones, Begin Again. And uh, this was put out by Blue Note and uh, came out in 2019. Uh, it's a mini album and it found uh, Nora Jones experimenting uh, with her trademark sound. Uh, she collaborates with uh, keyboardist Thomas Bartlett uh, on a couple of tracks and they explore similar territory to um, Radiohead. She also co-writes a couple of tracks with Jeff Tweedy from Wilco and as you'd expect uh, there's uh, an Americana influence on those tracks. Her voice has never sounded as smoky, naked and unadorned as, as here. And I think it's an experiment uh, that really impresses. Uh, next up, it's the Willard Grant Conspiracy and Regard the End, which was put out on the Loose label. And uh, it's all about the booming baritone of uh, Robert Fisher and uh, another artist who sadly passed away. He died in 2017. Uh, the combination of his deep voice and moody, emotive uh, storytelling songs uh, makes me think of other artists like uh, Nick Cave, Johnny Cash and uh, the Hanson family. Next, it's uh, Mark Lanigan and uh, Scraps at Midnight. And this was put out on the Sub Pop label. And he's another troubled artist with a baritone voice uh, and a fondness for dark themes and uh, biblical imagery in his songs. And uh, he passed away in just um, earlier this year in February. Uh, the obituary in the Guardian uh, newspaper uh, referred to him as follows. It said he was perhaps the greatest singer of his generation. Uh, I don't think I'd quite go that far, but uh, he is a, a very much sadly missed artist. Uh, Scraps at Midnight uh, was his third solo album and it came out in 1998. Uh, the eight minute plus final track, because of this, uh, breaks away from the alt country um, blues template on the rest of the album. And it sounds uh, uncannily to me like a cross between a Joy Division and uh, John Cale at his most sinister. And finally, to lift the mood, let's uh, go with Santana and uh, Abraxas. And this was Santana's second album, came out in 1970, and it's a satisfying mix of uh, rock, jazz, and uh, uh, Latin percussion influences. The cover of salsa band leader Tito Puente's Oye Como Va, and also a cover of Fleetwood Mac's uh, Black Magic Woman were the mega hits from this album. And it's a heady mix of uh, emotive flowing guitar from Carlos Santana, uh, Latin percussion, and a youthful exuberance as the band were all in their very early 20s at the time of recording this album. Okay, thanks for watching and I will see you again very soon. Take care.